chance we do it. All right, let's take a look at your forecast. Actually, you're active right now where we've got rain and thunder. In mind, if you have kids, you want to bring something to keep your children occupied. Let them pick a comfort item like a favorite toy or a quiet game. All right, Jim, let's talk about this heat in the West, breaking records left and right. Big time, Southern California. And especially, uh, you know, just considering how cool it's been for so many, but we have a lot of, uh, 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 but look, every year, it happens every year, right, with the pollen, so some years is worse than others. All right, we are halfway through the work week already. Glad you're here from AMHQ on Wednesday. Wind and heavy rain comes yeah. a very heavy rain, rainfall yeah. like an inch in about 48 minutes. And so watching the line of thunderstorms here, the leading edge right here, a lot of it over the Gulf of Mexico, still extends back into Texas. The uh, magnitude of the winds has come down, but you're still going to get some gusty winds up over 40 miles per hour. That's possible with this as we see this go south. Luckily, it is weakening. Still a lot of lightning, too, and that's another risk, and that is right over top of you in Freeport, Texas, right now. Let's go into Louisiana, where the line is offshore. Like, Charles, we're still in the rain. I just looked at your rainfall totals. Going back to yesterday, we picked up more than two and a half inches of rainfall, so it has been a very stormy last 24 hours for you. New Orleans, let's take a look out there, because you can see that the leading edge here is approaching on here, because we had some rain yesterday. About one to two inches fell all across this area. We've got flood watches up through this evening from Milwaukee down to Waukegan back over towards Rockford here in Illinois. And, you know, we are looking at an out we're a bit above average when it comes to our rainfall um, here across the area. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've we've had a wet start to the year here. Plus just recently, I mean, this rain event brought down some heavy rain yesterday and we are going to get additional rainfall still to come. So it's possible we could see some flash flooding. We haven't lost the showers yet. We didn't see much in the way of any damage damaging hail, maybe some pea sized hail for some of you. But what we saw was a lot of rainfall, and that's what we're still getting here. So from Waukegan to Chicago right now, look at this rain just kind of sitting right over the area. Here's our low pressure, and there's a couple things I want to say about this. A, it's not going to move out as quickly as you might like. And the other thing is there's some energy that's rotating around on the back side of this trough. So we are going to stay in a showery situation um, at times heavy rain right through the day today. It's energetic, right? So some of these showers are going to be heavy at times. Well, watch Chicago. You're in showers this morning. Look how you sort of get that sense of rotation around that low pressure. We are not going to shake it just yet. Throughout the day today, we are in and out of some rain. And we also have the winds kicking up, too. So some lakeshore flooding concerns that we have across this area this evening and then into tomorrow. Then speaking of tomorrow, we go over here into eastern Kentucky, into West Virginia, into the Carolinas for some heavy rainfall. Steph. A bit longer into the weekend here in the Northeast. Let's take a look at things. We'll start, of course, with your forecast today and it gets you into the weekend. Today, by the way, is National Zipper Day. I didn't even know, but I wore a dress with a zipper. Maybe you can use that as some uh, incentive for what you're going to choose to wear today. Um, but if you are heading outside for any reason, today and tomorrow, the Northeast, we've got rain moving in, especially tomorrow. It's going to be heavy at times, as Jim talked about. Sticks around into Friday. Now, the South, we warm up. Look at Dallas. We're up practically to 90 degrees. Pretty windy out there as well. We'll be up there in the upper 70s, near 80 across the Atlanta area, Charlotte, Raleigh, all warming up getting into the weekend. But look how we're still hanging on to some showers on Saturday in the Northeast. It's really not until Sunday that we clear out, but then the next system is coming in. All right, let's take a look at what's where the on through and all this Jen, interesting kind of sags down to the Gulf yeah. Coast. We can maybe get a little break. But the South isn't done yet. Today. No, 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 because it's going to refire. Right. So what, that's what we have to watch today. Because you, you notice how the northern edge of all this, kind of, I won't say it's fizzling, but it's definitely sort of squashing down towards the South. Jackson, you're in the thunderstorms here, but definitely there's more lightning. There's more of a risk of some stronger winds when that line approaches New Orleans. But watch what happens here through the rest of the Southeast. So through the day today, we're going to keep an eye on how much cloud cover we have or don't have because daytime heating will play a role in the instability. So that will be a factor. There's limited amounts of instability right now when we look at the forecast but the front's coming through so that will be the lift you know, there's plenty of moisture you step outside today you're going to notice a difference in the air it's going to feel more humid more um, late April or early May like right and we are going to have some stronger uh, low level winds coming in that low level jet and that's going to be one factor that we keep an eye on for potentially making these storms stronger with that risk of strong winds that would be the main threat today 11 o'clock south of Montgomery these storms are coming in and they're coming in from the south so south side of Atlanta this afternoon we could get some showers coming in, but then the main line comes in as we see out ahead of the front this line tracking east coming in from the west. This is about 7 o'clock in the Atlanta area uh, coming completely through by about midnight or so. Then watching across the Carolinas overnight thunderstorms blasting through Charlotte coming in towards the Raleigh and Triangle area and then down towards Charleston and the Low Country are thunderstorms about 5 a.m. We're teaming up with FeedingAmerica.org to help in the fight against hunger during the pandemic.
looking at 50 past the hour, we open our weather classroom to answer your questions about the weather. Today's question comes from Taylor. How does this us to our weather wisdom? Every morning at 50 past the hour, we open up our weather classroom to answer your questions about the weather. Today's question, right, for lightning, when you have thunderstorms that build into the atmosphere. And what happens in these thunderstorms is you have a strong updraft that carries the air and droplets above the freezing levels. So then you start to get some freezing happening and some of it is hail, some of it is ice crystals up in the top of the thunderstorm. And so when you have these uh, particles rubbing against each other, there's a charge created and you get the uh, positive charges up to the top and you get the negative charges down to the bottom. They're a little bit heavier. They kind of sink down. Um, and so that plus the fact that the ground is positively charged, you get a buildup of charges. And so lightning, basically an electrical current. And when you get a connection between the negative charges uh, in the cloud and then the positive charges on the ground, there is your lightning strike right there, as hot as 50,000 degrees, hotter than the surface of the sun. And you know, when we talk about lightning, let's talk about where we always think of Florida as the lightning capital of the US, and it is, but we get a lot of lightning too across portions of the Southern Plains and Mississippi. Mississippi Valley and really a lot of the east gets you know a decent number of days every year with lightning. Now we take a look at the time of day when you're most likely to see lightning strike. It's the afternoon as you would expect when the thunderstorms are building up right here. All right, what weather do you want to gain some wisdom for hour? We saw that in Kima, not too far from Galveston, from a storm spotter there. Still have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. When the storms blasted through Houston, Hobby Airport gusting to 56. Austin, we gusted to 54. Still in some rain and getting some pretty heavy rain, actually, about a close to a half inch of rain in Austin so far. Lake Charles, we gusted to 60 when this came through. I think it was 61, actually, earlier this morning. Now you're just in the steady rain behind the, the leading line. Galveston, we're still in it, still getting some strong gusts winds here right into town. Uh, we are watching around the Austin area uh, still. I mean, look, it's still gusty. Winds are still about, I think, 15 to 20, 22 miles per hour was the last gust I saw. It's starting to settle a little bit, but there's still a lot of lightning around. Certainly those winds at the leading edge of everything are the strongest for you there with that line. Uh, no severe thunderstorm warnings though right now, so not up to 60 miles per hour, just just gusty. Then we go over to Louisiana and around the Hammond area. Again, not a severe thunderstorm warning, but likely I think you'll see some winds easily gusting. Um, um, up over about 40. Oh, we are in a severe thunderstorm morning. No, you're just tracking this line. Okay. Um, but we are going to track the seas. 40 to 50 mile per hour winds are certainly possible just based on what I've seen. Um, we've got Reserve, La Place, Mandeville, Picayune, and New Orleans. As we track this to you in New Orleans, the timing is about 702 as this heads in your direction. And then out ahead of that, we've got a couple of th thunderstorms that have popped uh, through the overnight. These moving through Biloxi right now, and they're kind of building back up. There's got to be some kind of boundary right in here. Here. These are out over the water, but I think just telling of the environment there. So watching out for some lightning, not taking the boat out this morning in that area. Still have a severe thunderstorm watch until nine o'clock this morning, and we're going to be watching these thunderstorms. Once they go south of you, uh, you'll be looking for some improved weather, just getting to the plain old rain as opposed to the thunderstorms. But within a couple of hours, everything is out of the area, and we will see some drying weather. Houston by lunchtime, the rain is completely over. Even before that, that's 11 a.m., and everything is out of here. Like Charles Baton Rouge, same deal for you. Things are all moving to the south and to the east, but we are going to be tracking everything over into the east and the southeast in particular today as we watch new thunderstorms fire up. So let's go to Steph with more on that. Steph.